Okay, guys, and right now we're going to talk about the last of our preliminary crimes, which is conspiracy. So if you didn't watch the first video on, cons on preliminary crimes, make sure you watch that first. This is the um, second part of that lesson. All right, so guys, when we're looking at conspiracy, this is the definition, and these are the elements of what we're looking at in the state of Pennsylvania. Basically, in order to have a conspiracy, we have to have at least two people. Sometimes conspiracies have two people. Sometimes when we get into um, really large conspiracies, especially if they involve things like drugs or weapons or money, we can see hundreds or even thousands of people. Um, a lot of times those really wide ranging conspiracies, they'll get some of the people on the bottom to rat out the people on the top. So you may have a pretty wide ranging conspiracy that has hundreds of people, but they're not going after all the lower people. Um, so we won't necessarily see like a ton of trials. But um, conspiracies, you, you just have to have two or more people. They have to agree to commit the crime. And in most states, there has to be a substantial action to further the agreement. In Pennsylvania, the specific um, elements are that you need an agreement with one or more person. So the way it's worded is a little bit different. If you look at it, it's an agreement between two people. Um, when they're charging the individual, they'll say, did you have an agreement with one or more person? So you can't have a conspiracy with just one person. It has to be the person you're charging and they had to have an agreement with one more person at least. Okay. And then the next thing we're looking for is an overt act. And the overt act is a little bit different than a substantial step in the, um, when we talk about attempt, right? And the overt act is really what we're going to look for here because that's what a lot of people get hung up on, okay? The overt act is something that is open to view, and this is the thing that a lot of students get mixed up on. It does not have to be something that's illegal. So if you and a friend agree that you're going to rob a bank and you sit in your basement and you talk about it, um, that's not a conspiracy. There's no overt action there, right? If you and your friend agree that you're going to rob a bank and then one of you goes to the store and buys a ski mask to wear while they're robbing the bank, that is an overt act. And this is the thing that a lot of students get mixed up on because the overt act itself does not have to be illegal. You could drive by the bank to stake it out. Driving down the street past the bank is not illegal. Going to the store and buying a ski mask is not illegal. Um, all of those things are, you know in furtherance of the conspiracy, but not necessarily illegal. The overt act can be illegal, but it doesn't have to be. All right, here's the example, guys. Emily, Sammy, and Caitlin agree that they're gonna kidnap a fellow classmate. So right here, guys, we have um, more than two people, all right, or I should say two or more people, right? So we've got three people and they're agreeing to do something illegal. They're agreeing to kidnap a classmate. Uh, they agree to kidnap Davin, and then Sammy goes out and buys the necessary supplies and begins a stake out of his house. Here's the thing, guys. Once we have an agreement to commit an illegal act, my son's lightsaber is going off in the background. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Um, once you have an agreement to commit the overt act, all of the parties will be on the hook, even if they don't take any more steps. Um, so once we have the agreement, Sorry, let me back up. I'm distracted by the lightsaber. Once we have the agreement to commit the illegal act, even if one party carries it further and actually commits the overt act, that puts everyone on the hook. You don't need a separate overt act for each party. Okay, so in this case, Emily, Sammy, and Caitlin agree they're going to kidnap a classmate. Emily and Sammy pinpoint it to Davin, all right? Caitlin is not part of this decision. All she said was, hey, let's, let's kidnap a classmate, all right? Then Sammy goes out and commits the overt act, buys supplies, begins a stake out, okay? All three parties are going to be guilty. Even if Caitlin never went any further with the act, with the conspiracy, she's still going to be on the One person went out and committed an overt act, and that's important to remember. All right, um, guys, here's a note. In many states, all three parties would be guilty of conspiracy even if the kidnapping is never attempted or accomplished. So maybe that's all they do. Maybe they agree they're gonna kidnap someone and then they go and um, buy a ski mask or stake out a house or whatever. Okay, at that point, 
technically the crime of conspiracy has been complete. So if that's it, if nobody else does anything else, if they don't um, continue through with their plan to kidnap their classmate, technically they have still committed um, conspiracy. So that's important to remember as well.